Hello and welcome back to What the Fact. I'm Katie and this is Erin. It's time to focus now on one of the hottest Senate races in the country. Feels like we say that every week, but it's really always true. Uh, this time, North Dakota. Incumbent Senator Heidi Heitkamp, a Democrat, she's facing a tough challenge in a typically conservative state from Republican Kevin Kramer. And we're going to start with a claim from Heitkamp's campaign um, on health care, which is a really important issue to Americans. In a 30-second digital ad recently, Heitkamp introduces North Dakotans to Denise from Kildeer. Denise has a pre-existing condition, Heitkamp says. And Kramer, she says, wants to go back to a policy that would allow health insurance companies to take away her coverage, and similar coverage to 300,000 North Dakotans. Is that right? Take a look. North Dakota Senator Heidi Heitkamp, a Democrat, is trying to hang on to her seat in a very red state. One way she's trying to do that is by pointing voters to her Republican opponent's votes on health care law. Like 300,000 North Dakotans, Denise has a pre-existing condition that used to mean no health insurance. For me, it's breast cancer. For Denise, it's heart disease. She has something she'd like to say to Kevin Kramer. Mr. Kramer, I don't know why you voted to let insurance companies go back to denying coverage for pre-existing conditions, but I know Heidi would never do that. Before we get into a fact check here, we should establish that Heitkamp and Denise are clearly talking about the Affordable Care Act. That law made it illegal for insurance companies to deny coverage to someone because of a pre-existing condition. The 300,000 figure is a rough number of all North Dakotans with a pre-existing condition. But even if the Affordable Care Act were repealed or replaced, the number who would lose coverage is far smaller only including people who aren't part of a group plan, like through an employer. Kramer supports keeping companies from denying coverage on the basis of a pre-existing condition. But the laws he's backed would eliminate subsidies for insurance companies that take on high-risk patients. That would mean really high premiums for those people. So there's some truth to the argument that Kevin Kramer has supported healthcare laws that would have made it much harder for people with pre-existing conditions to be covered. But it's not as cut and dry or as large scale as Heitkamp makes it seem. All right, Aaron, that's a pretty nuanced picture. So how do we rate this claim? Yeah, we ended up rating this claim half true, uh, which means partially accurate, partially inaccurate, however you want to kind of uh, take it. Um, the, the big takeaway for me here is uh, High Camp is kind of uh, scaring people by saying that 300,000 North Dakotans are at risk of losing their health care coverage. Uh, the reality is Kramer's votes would only really affect uh, people who are covered in the individual or non-group market. That's a very small percentage of the 300,000 uh, uh, North Dakotans who have a pre-existing condition. I saw an estimate somewhere of around 10%. Uh, so the people at risk, much a uh, tiny fraction of what Heitkamp says, that's kind of the strike against her. However, Kramer's votes to repeal the Affordable Care Act certainly uh, would replace uh, the law with skimpier co coverage for people with pre-existing conditions. It would essentially allow insurance companies a lot more leeway to charge a lot more, uh, to make uh, coverage more affordable, more unaffordable, uh, more difficult to purchase, and quite frankly, difficult for a lot of North Dakotans to get. Um, and so Kramer's office is going to say here, and they have, is that uh, he supports keeping coverage for pre-existing conditions. The laws that he supported, the repeal bills that he voted on, technically do that, but they essentially make it in such a way by stripping away regulations and safeguards that it would, it would allow insurance companies to really have the upper hand in saying, here's what we're going to charge or, or, uh, or else. Uh, and so uh, the practical effect, a lot of experts say, is that people would not be able to purchase affordable health care the way they can now if they have a pre-existing condition. Yeah, I think some people, um, it's important to remind people a little bit of health care history. And uh, I think before the Affordable Care Act, uh, people in this market, this individual market, could get turned down for having a pre-existing condition. Okay. That could be anything from hay fever to cancer, um, a lot of other illnesses or conditions. Um, they could also get charged more for having that condition, mm -hmm. or they could be offered a health plan that excluded its coverage entirely. All of those things are illegal under the Affordable Care Act. Now, as for this number, this 300,000 estimate, um, we found a pretty credible estimate calculated by Health and Human Services all the way back in 2009. It was around 275,000 North Dakotans who had pre-existing conditions. Um, a more like another estimate put it at 316,000 from the Liberal Center for American Progress. 
So those numbers are credible, but it's kind of important to remember, as you alluded, um, as you alluded to, it's not entirely representative of the people who are in that individual insurance market. Right. A lot of them are receiving group coverage, so it's not exactly a clear shot to say that Kramer's votes would change the situation. All right, so let's transition now to a claim made by Kramer. Kramer is the at-large uh, U.S. House member from North Dakota, uh, so we actually uh, like uh, Heidi Heitkamp is also elected statewide, so that makes this a pretty interesting race. Uh, Kramer said uh, he would oppose in a radio interview any measure uh, by uh, to shut down the government. This is something Something that's come up recently uh, and frequently because Donald Trump is is saying that he's okay with a shutdown for him to get the money he wants primarily to uh, increase border security and potentially build a wall. I've always voted for keeping the government open. I've never cast a vote to, to shut down the government. Uh, but in this case, the facts don't line up with Creamer's assertion. Katie. Yeah, there's so, uh, this race, um, you'll never guess, as mostly false. It's the rating uh, du jour. Um, and I think the key distinction here is his insistence that he's always voted for keeping the government open and he's yeah. never cast a vote to shut down the government. While an expert told us, uh, a political science professor, told us that there's no such thing as a formal shutdown vote, right. his actions in the House pretty much indicated that he was okay with it. Um, they actually indirectly resulted in a shutdown uh, back from 2013 when Republicans in Congress were fighting the Obama administration um, over the Affordable Care Act, yep. uh, which we're seeing attacks on uh, all the time now. Um, as a minority party, Republicans didn't have the numbers to change the law, and Obama and his fellow Democrats refused to agree to gut it. Kramer um, was part of the contingent uh, following a 16-day shutdown in October 2013, um, where lawmakers voted to fund both the government and the Affordable Care Act. Um, so we talked to another political scientist named Josh Ryan at Utah State University, and he said Kramer has voted for bills he knew would force a government shutdown because they defunded Obamacare and had absolutely no chance of passing the Senate or being signed by the president. So while you can't really vote for a government shutdown, you can certainly take actions that will lead to it knowing full well what will happen. All right, that's gonna do it for this week's edition of What the Fact. Thank you so much for joining us. Until next week, I'm Katie, this is Aaron. Have a great week. See you.